Hey, what's going on, Internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So, in this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and be creating this. Audio Jungle. So basically it is a audio react and we're using the plugin particular and optical flares and you'll be able to use uh, if you have particular this effect to um, do some cool audio reaction um, and if you have sound keys uh, which is also another plugin for uh, Red Giant the trap code suite um, you'll be able to even take this even further I don't have it so we won't worry about that in this tutorial um, but this is an audio reaction and we're working with maybe we could say millions of particles or we'll, we'll be able to so it's pretty cool and also this render is without motion blur because I was not gonna you know sit here and do hours of rendering but anyway let's go ahead and get started and talk about how we can create this so the first thing we're gonna do is that I already have my audio in the timeline and I have the waveform up and if you want to bring up the waveforms you hit LL on your keyboard to bring up the waveform and then what we'll do is go up to effect audio and we'll click on high low pass and then we want to send the dry out, uh, set the dry out to 400%, which is the max. So let's go here and right click this layer and let's go ahead and set the keyframe assistant to convert audio to keyframes. And if we hit uh, U on our keyboard to bring up the keyframes, as you can see, we have the slider controls. Let's go here and delete the left and right channels. And as you can see, this value is changing and it is animating so it's pretty cool so anyway let's go up to uh, layer new light and we'll call this one emitter and then we'll go ahead and click OK and then um, let's go here and maybe uh, create a new solid by going to layer new solid and we'll call this one flare and let's go up to effect video copilot optical flares and I'm just gonna go ahead and open the options real fast and um, go ahead and clear all and I'm just gonna add a glow and that's it okay so then I'm gonna go ahead and send the, set the source type to track lights so now the flare goes automatically to the light here and this is also optional if you don't have optical flares um, it just looks really cool to have a flare but you know it's really up to you and thing is if we move the emitter now uh, the flare will move right with our light so pretty awesome looking cool so Let's go ahead and maybe go ahead and create some particles now, get into the fun stuff. Actually, let me keep that open. Okay, so we'll go ahead and create a new solid and we'll call it Particular. So let's go up to Effect Trap Code Particular. And then let's go ahead and open up the emitter properties and set the emitter type to lights. And that will be connected right to our light. And that's looking pretty good. And then let's go ahead and start changing some of these settings so like let's go ahead and set the velocity down to zero the velocity random to zero the distribution to zero and the velocity for motion to zero so they're all converging at this point right here but let's go ahead and maybe set the emitter size to like 140 and that's the x value and set the y value to 153 and the z value to 64. now these are settings that i use i highly suggest you guys experiment with your own settings i'm just going ahead and using my settings so i don't have to go back and forth um, and we'll save and save time so so before we affect anything else let's go to like the light down here the r emitter and let's click the stopwatch for position and let's go to the beginning of our timeline and let's go ahead and maybe set this x position to come all the way over here so now We'll have just a little animation to go off of and we'll kind of have an idea of what's going on and we're not completely in the dark of how this is going to start what we do is going to start affecting our particles our animation so let's go here and open up the particle settings and let's change the life a uh, second per second to 1.2 all right and then let's go ahead and change the size to 0.1 okay so this is going to make the particles extremely small but this is where uh, we'll be able to add, you know, millions of particles, you know, whatever you want to do. So I'm going go up to go back up to the particles per second under the emitter settings. And I'm going to go ahead and set this to 100,000. Is that 100,000? I hope so. That may have been a million. No, that's 100,000. So 100K. And you see, we zoom in here, we have a ton of particles. And it's getting there, guys. It's getting there. So let's go ahead and uh, let's continue to affect the uh, particle settings and let's see let's go here to the size random and set that to 100 percent 
And then let's also uh, set the opacity random to 100%. And then let's go ahead and set the uh, color to over life. And if you want to change the colors or anything like that, uh, you can go to the color over life and you can ch you know use these presets or change the color. But I'm going to leave it how it is because I really don't care about affecting that. And then I'm going ahead and set the transfer mode to add. Okay, so things are looking okay. So what we need to do is maybe we'll go right into the aux system for now. And we'll go ahead and set the emit to continuously. And this might take a second to load up here. All right, so... We just did the worst thing in the world, but let's go ahead and start affecting these settings and making it look nice. The first thing I'm going to do is set the size to 0.5. All right, so it's starting to look a little bit better. So let's go ahead and maybe set the emit probability uh, from 100% to 32% in the setting I used, of course. So I know what works uh, for me at least. And then uh, let's see the uh, opacity. Let's go ahead and set that down to 10 and the uh, color from main, let's go ahead and set that to like maybe 41%. And that will kind of blend some of the colors in. And of course, you can change the colors of uh, the, uh, the aux particles from color over life as well. But I'm not going to change that. And let's go ahead and set the transfer mode to add. And that will kind of make things a little bit white in there, looking pretty good. And set the feather to 100 And that is looking all good. And let's go into the physics. Okay. And let's open up the air uh, model here. And let's go ahead and go into the turbulent field. And let's go ahead and go to where it says effect position. Set that to 1200. And you should definitely mess around with this setting. Just because it'll get, you'll get some crazy stuff. And let's set the effect size to 10. Perfect. So now... We'll have definitely these cool stream of particles, uh, you know, going along here. We create a nice little look. Actually, might look even better than uh, my actual demo. But let's keep continuing to go here and let's go to the physics and let's change the gravity to like 10. Okay, and um, I think I made a mistake. And uh, basically, the fade in time per second that should be set to five. And you see now we have this nice little stream of particles. And there's a few more settings we could affect right here, like the octave uh, scale. We can set that to 3. And then the actual scale to, like, maybe 30. And maybe we can play with the evolution speed. Maybe set to, like, 130. And now we have a nice stream of particles here. And I think everything looks good. So we go here. Take a look at what we did. So now we have this you know, nice set of particles. So now, you know, um, if you want to mess with anything, you know, I would suggest experimenting with a lot of these settings because you can create some awesome things. But let's go here and let's really start to add that audio reaction and properly animate this. So, so let's go ahead and create a null object by going to layer, new null object. And uh, I'm just going to call this one, just call it null. And then uh, let's go here and let's uh, parent. Let's hit U on our keyboard under the audio amplitude. And let's go ahead here and let's hit P on our keyboard for position for the null object. And let's alt click the stopwatch and let's parent the position to the slider of the audio amplitude. So if we scrub here, as you can see, this null object up here is going to wiggle a little bit and react to the audio. So uh, then let's go ahead and parent our emitter. Uh, just go over here to the null object. And now the particles will react to the music. And that looks decent. So then let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and maybe start animating uh, how we want this to go. So we have it going across like this. So maybe we'll go here and adjust our, both of our keyframes by selecting them both. Then maybe we'll bring the Y value down by a little bit. Cool, and maybe we'll bring this closer to us by affecting the uh, Z position. And it's adding a lot of render time or buffering time here. So it is coming along. So now, basically, what I would like to do is kind of keep this in the center of our screen as much as we can. So right now we have this going from you know left or right. But I want to keep this in the center. So what I'll do, so let's go ahead and create a new camera by going to Layer, New, camera 
And I'm going to use like, I don't know, maybe a 20 millimeter preset and click OK. All right, so that is really close. So let me go to the uh, go to the tools at the top here and hit the X, Y camera track. Now, sorry, let's hit the Z camera track tool and let's uh, zoom out of here and hold down shift so we can really see how uh, we can really push this back and I went too far there. Okay, and that's a good spot right there. Um, so let's go ahead and maybe uh, click the stopwatch for position on our camera here. And then let's go ahead and move forward in time here and let's go ahead and grab the track X, Y camera tool. And let's try to center this up and it's very sensitive. So I wanna be very careful about it. Boom, so now we'll have a little bit of audio reaction and things are looking pretty cool. Maybe we can zoom in a little bit, but uh, what we need to do uh, is go back into our particular here and uh, what we need to do is go to the maybe like 12 frames or something and we need to keyframe the emitter uh, size X, Y, and Z. Go to the beginning, set all this to zero. And then let's go here to our flare layer and uh, let's go ahead and also keyframe the brightness. So let me uh, click the stopwatch for brightness, hit U on our keyboard to bring up the keyframes, set this keyframe to 12 seconds and then set the first keyframe to zero. So now everything will kind of just come on with our uh, start of our animation and we got a little, uh, you know, animation going on for music. Audio reaction looks good um, and uh, things look good. So let's go ahead and maybe zoom it in a little bit more. And like I said, just select both the camera keyframes and we can just uh, mess with the Z position here and we can like get a little bit closer. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, if we want to add some really cool dips to this, what we can do is go to our audio amplitude layer and we can select a lot of these keyframes and maybe just delete them. And this is the power of actually having sound keys that you you could just uh, animate this thing like crazy. But if you want to add your own animation, what we do is delete those keyframes and go to the middle here and just really, uh, you know, increase the slider amount. So now the uh, particles will just kind of bolt off and then they'll fall back into place like that. So you can really mess with these and uh, create some really cool uh, animations with this and, you know, just increase the particle. So we have all these particles going all over the place. So it'll look really awesome. So go ahead and mess with that. And then um, we also need to mess with the camera settings a little bit more. So like if we open up the uh, camera options here, uh, one thing I want to take a look at is the aperture of the camera. The lower this number, the sharper the uh, particles will be. So if I set the aperture down to two instead of 10, uh, as you see, the particles are even smaller, and but they're they're sharper because they're in like super sharp focus. So you want to keep that in mind. And you can create some really interesting stuff. You can create some bokeh if you really just uh, increase the aperture like crazy. But this is typically you know how you can create um, some awesome audio reaction. And like I said, if you have sound keys, go ahead and use that um, because you'll be able to react this like crazy. So that's pretty much how you can do this audio reaction. Um, and you know, of course, doing this setting manually is not ideal because um, you know you don't. You just got to have to understand where some of the sync uh, parts of your song are going to have to be. If you have sound keys, that won't be a problem. Um, but um, yeah, I would usually do a re final render at the end of my tutorials, but I'm not going to do that this time because the render time is takes a little bit of time. And then if you enable motion blur, you'll you'll create a really sick look, but the render time is going to be insane. So just keep that in mind when you enable motion blur. If I can let it load here, um, I'll show you kind of what this will look like. It'll look really nice. So, I don't know, it's just, it'll look more realistic and cool, but um, just make sure you, know, you understand what you're getting yourself into when you enable motion blur. So guys, if you have any questions or requests for tutorials, please drop a comment down below. And if this video has been helpful, please drop a like. It helps me out tremendously. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing for more after effects tutorials just like this and guys thank you so much for watching this video and hopefully i'll see you soon